Welcome everybody. Thank you for watching my channel, Explore with Alex. I hope everybody's doing great. Today I am taking you to another place that we're exploring and it's called the Leone's Adobe Museum in Calabasas. They were not married. They were a joint couple living here. Uh, Mr. Miguel Leones was a rancher and he was well known as the King of Calabasas. So this was the actual house? That was in 1905. We believe this to be Mr. Leones' wife, Espiritu, and we believe that to be Juan. Uh, this is Juan, Espiritu's son by her first marriage, and this is Espiritu, also up there. Uh, that was Mr. Leonis's wife. He died in a wagon accident in 1889. Um, and, uh, uh, How old was they, he? Um, he was born in 1822, and then died in 1889, so 67. And I believe she lived to be almost uh, in, into her 70s, which is very uh, unusual for a Native American woman. She was uh, 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 Chumash and Tongva. And that was her daughter. And that was daughter. their daughter, Marcelina. She was born in 1860 and then died of unknown causes in 1880. Uh, they just didn't keep records uh, like they do now, so we don't know the cause of death. She never married, so there's no direct descendants. The house fell into disrepair and heavily vandalized. And uh, then uh, along came Kay Beachy and her husband. Kay Beachy, the, the Beachies uh, had a ranch in the San Fernando Valley. Anyway, they owned that land and ranched that land, and she felt that this land needed to be preserved, this type of lifestyle. What was the story on when he died, when the husband died? What was the story? Because I read some of it. Okay, when he died, he left a small, Amount. I think it was five or ten thousand dollars. I mean, it was a lot of money for the time. For that time, yes. But considering he was the sixth richest man in Los Angeles, uh, not much money, and he left the money to his family. She challenged it. Now, remember, this is 1890, and she is a woman and a Native American of woman at that. So it's quite a thing for her to take uh, that on. The court case lasted 16 years, and of course, they lost a lot of the worth of the property just uh, due to legal costs but she did prevail it's you'll see a blow up of this photo in the upstairs, in the upstairs. of their house and it's believed uh, that this photo was taken in her lawyer's office i always felt she had a vindicated look on her face so this was taken in 1905 and then she died right, early in 1906 says. She, she died in 1906? 1906 just a few months later and there's no record when the daughter died there was no cause of death. They didn't have to do cause of death. Um, there was some suggestion uh, that she had um, smallpox, but there was no smallpox epidemic. And this is actually their house? No, that, the, the, the adobe there was their house. Mr. Leonis never learned to speak English, but oh, really? because of his land holdings, and when you go into the barn, you can see a map of all his land holdings, about 18,000 acres of Southern California. So what language did he speak? Uh, Basque uh, and Spanish. Spanish was the language on the Spanish. ranch here. That, that's what they spoke. A lot of what we know to be true about him we know from Marcelina's writings. Uh, she was educated over at San Fernando Mission. Here was stuff that was found in the well. Those were added on. And where, would you, where did you find this? Um, over by the, you'll see the barbecue over there. 
So and you're always finding it, something. Anytime it rains. I found a piece of this uh, pink castle dish here. Miguel Nionis was known as the king of Calabasas, who owned over 10,000 acres of land here. So back in time, they had uh, horses and, of course, sheep and goats and chickens. So according to the legend, the Leonis Adobe is haunted and was also featured in the British Paranormal Television series, Most Haunted in 2005. Uh, this place was built in 1844, and it's one of the oldest surviving private residents in Los Angeles County, and one of the oldest surviving buildings in San Fernando Valley, which is located now in uh, Calabasas. So pretty much this museum features uh, authentically furnished two-story Monterey-style adobe uh, with original buildings and similar livestock gardens and a vineyard. And we're going to go take a look at the house, which was the uh, original built in 1844, six years before Los Angeles was incorporated and California became a state. That there was the outhouse. This is called the horno, which is the oven. Let's go up to 
to the bedrooms. There were no closets or wardrobes in this room, so clothes were kept folded in dressers and trunks or were hung on hooks on the walls. So see, you could see that uh, she would hung her close like that. It's been uh, said that Espiritu does roam around the second floor and I'm not surprised because this is her home it's a beautiful home so we're gonna go downstairs now to the dining room and the kitchen. So the uh, fireplace was restored in 1965 using the original bricks. This fireplace and the wood burning stove in the adjoining kitchen were the only sources of heat in the house. Is, next is the kitchen here. First built, the kitchen had no running water. Pails were used to carry the water from the well into the house, and during the 1920s, a pipe was run uh, from the tank house to the kitchen. Cooking was done on a wood burning stove. Several holes cut into the ceiling indicate that the uh, stove changed location over the years. So this uh, cupboard was used to store household goods like soap, candles, and lard and kerosene. was used to make both wine and aguardiente which is brandy from grapes grown in the vineyard and at least one of the wine presses came from the San Fernando Mission. used as a extra sleeping quarters for hired hands and ranch workers. <laughs> 